What's going on everybody? Brett here, back with my YouTube channel Good Talk Gaming. As you can see, we're chilling in Steam today for something of a different video than I normally do. Um, in yesterday's video, we took down uh, the Goblin City in Battle Brothers, and that was such a big video, it's kind of stressful for me. Um, I think I wanted to take a break today and really focus on talking about the DLC. I kind of talk about it off and on in my Battle Brothers videos, but never really a chance to, to focus. So I want to go over this with you guys, the different news that's being put out. Um, every week, uh, Overhype is putting out different tidbits of news, and they're very good about that. And for those of you who've missed it, or maybe not super interested um, in following it along yourself, and you just rather wait until it comes out, uh, I totally understand that. But I follow the news like a hawk. Every week I want to know what's going on, and it really kind of makes my day. So today they released another bit of news. But I thought before it gets too far along, let's start at the beginning and kind of go along the path of the releases uh, as they've been dropped. So first off, all we all we received was this kind of cryptic picture and message, something stirs in the north. And I don't know about you guys, but I was not expecting another DLC so soon. And I was pleasantly surprised when they kind of announced this back in January 25th. So they also gave us this picture here. Um, dudes fighting in the snow using, you know, some kind of unique looking helmets and different kind of armor. So we didn't get anything for another week. And then boom, here we go. We get the name, title, Warriors of the North. So that was February 1st. And I can go ahead and read this for you guys. It says, we're excited to announce that we're working on another DLC for Battle Brothers. In other words, there's going to be even more content for that game that you like. The name of the upcoming DLC is going to be Warriors of the North. As the name suggests, the focus of the DLC will be on introducing a new human faction hailing from the North, Vikings. You know, This faction follows the old ways of raiding and sacrificing prisoners to cruel gods. They'll bring more regional flavor to the northern parts of the map, which is awesome, uh, as well as different challenge to fighting brigands in the North at every stage of the game. I imagine they'll probably seem to play a lot like a mix between orcs and brigands. Uh, this DLC will be focused on new content, and it will be smaller in scope than Beast and Exploration. This also means that you won't have to wait quite as long until you can play it, which is good. It's a quick DLC. This is honestly the pace I wish they'd been doing things since the game first launched. It seemed like they were just going to leave this game alone for a long time, but I guess they realized so many people love it, uh, and there's still money to be made, which is, is great. Um, I love this image, by the way. This will probably be the thumbnail. Such a sweet, sweet picture. And it says, here's the rough list of features we're aiming for. A variety of new human opponents with their own fighting style and equipment, providing a fresh challenge at every stage of the game, including the late game. And I'm sure it'll just be big bands of these Viking type guys. Different origins to pick for your company. This is the big one and the one that I'm most excited about. And I can't wait to go over in just a minute. Each with different starting characters, equipment, and circumstances, as well as special rules that impact your campaign from beginning to end. That is huge. It's something I pretty much since the first time I played Battle Brothers, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you could put different parameters at the start of a game? Um, and they went one step further. And instead of just including like little boxes you could check off to, you know, limit this or expand that, they made whole backgrounds, whole stories that are going to add tons of flavor to the campaigns. And as a guy who's trying to get into YouTube and making these videos, this is going to give so much longevity to my Battle Brothers series that I'm just going to be restarting campaigns like crazy just to play. Um, ooh, before I get, I don't want to spoil, no spoilers. We'll get into that in just a second. But let's see, it also says new Nordic and Rus inspired banners, armors and helmets. I love that Nordic and kind of Russian uh, style stuff. It's going to fit really well in the world of Battle Brothers. Um, and it also opens up, you know, if they, let's say they want to do a desert DLC down south. And then there's this kind of like Arabian feel that they can go for um, with different types of, of arms and armor that way. And, you know, desert raiders and Bedouin style opponents who ride. Uh, still, I'm hoping for horses, guys. At some point in this game, we need to get horses. You know, we have wolf riders. That's kind of like already there. But let's get like Bedouins riding camels and knights riding, you know, armored war horses and Vikings riding bears and stuff i would love that i'd be all about it a new legendary location which i imagine is probably just like the viking stronghold uh new contracts 
new events. In addition to these major features, the DLC will also include countless smaller additions. Just like in the past, we'll explain all major features and most minor ones in detail in future dev blogs as we go along. So you'll always know what we're working on and why. We expect to be finished within the next few months and we'll announce a release date and final feature list once we're closer to the finish line. Alongside the DLC, which will not be free, the game will also receive a sizable free update again, which is awesome. For those of you out there who maybe don't have the funds to keep dropping money on DLCs, you'll still get something. So this update will contain a whole bunch of improvements, quality of life features, and balancing changes, as well as some minor content additions. Okay, awesome. So this is someone else announcing, you know, about it. But here we go. This is the stuff that I wanted to get into. And this, there's two parts. The one that just released today, which is why I felt like it was worth making the video. And I'm going to go in order of the way they released it. And I'll read it once again. But this is what's going to add longevity to this game. And the more of these company origins that they add, the deeper and richer the experience of Battle Brothers will become. Um, and the more incentive you'll have to play through a campaign, to start a new campaign right after you finish. And this is what has me more hyped. Um, I didn't put enough stock in this when I first got uh, the announcement uh, for Warriors of the North. And I kind of read that little blurb. I didn't really put two and two together. But seeing these screens here really brought it home for me. So it says, welcome to our first dev blog on the upcoming Warriors of the North DLC. One of this expansion's major features is going to be a little thing called Company Origins. And that's what we'll be talking about this week and the next. Let's dive in. So until now, there's only been a single way of starting out in the world of Battle Brothers. Because the game is otherwise designed for replayability, this is an area we really want to tackle with the upcoming Warriors of the North DLC, both to further improve replayability and to accommodate different playstyles. Huge. Absolutely perfect. Uh, the established way of starting out in the world, your company origin, you likely know well by now. Your company is nearly wiped out by a brigand named Hoggart, and it's up to you to rebuild it. Absolutely. So this origin remains available in the game, and it's a good way to start for new players, but it'll just be one of many possible origins to choose from. For starters, the free update coming with the DLC will introduce a second origin, which immediately drops you into the world without having to deal with Hoggart. It's reminiscent of early access days, and it even has the old introductory text and music that some of you may remember. So take a second to read that if you want. Pause the video. It's very cool uh, that they brought this type of stuff back. So that'll be an option. But here we're going to get into the more unique ones. So it says the Warriors of the North DLC adds greatly to the selection of origins. Each of those comes with a flavor introduction. Different starting characters, equipment, resources, and special rules for your campaign. Some origins change the game more than others, but most of them impact it from beginning to end. Because the game is, and always will be fundamentally, about leading a mercenary company, all origins will ultimately lead to this. But they do add new challenges, accommodate different play styles, and provide role-playing flavor. If you own the Beast and Exploration DLC, you'll also get a bonus origin centered around Beast Slaying. I'm excited about that. A bit messed up there okay so let's take a closer look at two origins that they're going to add to the game just keep in mind that things are in active development and may be subject to change okay i don't know why that keeps doing that okay if you prefer this one's called the militia so if you prefer to overwhelm your enemies with superior numbers or even just equal numbers in the late game but still want a balanced game then the peasant militia might be for you i love this one i'm going to go ahead and read it so this is how i guess pretty close to what it'll look like when you choose this. It says, what started as a ragtag militia made up of anyone brave or desperate enough to volunteer for defending their homes has grown into a small army, a small army that you command and one that needs to be fed each day. Perhaps the militia services could be rented out. So peasant army, start with a roster of 12 poorly equipped peasants. I love it. I love it. Take up to 18 men into battle at once and have up to 27 in your roster. So here's the downside. Dirty peasants can never hire anyone that isn't a low-born peasant. So you'll never get any sword masters. You're not going to get any hedge knights. You're not, you know, you can't hire them, but I wonder if they can still join your party through events. That's worth, worth noting because I've picked up lots of dudes, you know, trapped in spider webs or, you know, um, save them from orc camps. And they've ended up being adventurous nobles and hedge knights. And they've ended up being awesome members of my party. So I wonder if you can still get them. You just can't hire them. That would be good to know. 
uh, but 18 men in your roster, uh, in your in your battle party. So I've beaten this game before without going past basically peasant tier guys. Sometimes you can find peasants that have really good stats, and having 18 men in a roster, that's that's enormous. You could have eight guys in the end of the game with war bows, you know, a full front line of heavily armored dudes. It doesn't quite matter so much if they suck. <laughs> you know, if if you could put tons of firepower downfield, uh, just make a solid wall of heavy armor. Um, man, 18, six more men than I could currently field. In my, in my playthrough right now, if I could drop six of my brothers into, the com into combat, like, I don't even know if there's a fight in the game that could that could handle me. So I'm looking forward to doing this one. I can't wait. Just all like tanners and miners and brawlers and stuff. We're, it's going to be awesome. So the militia starts not with three companions, but with a full roster of a dozen characters from various civilian backgrounds. Day tailors, farmers, butchers, millers, and the like. With these kinds of people... You'll want to rely on numbers, so you'll be able to field 18 men on the field at once instead of the usual 12. The downside, of course, is that you'll never be able to hire any noble or high-tier combat backgrounds to join your mob of angry peasants. You'll start with lower renown and crowns. So you'll have all these dudes. A lot of them will probably die right off the bat just because they'll, they'll be wearing peasant robes and stuff. And you have less renown, so you have to kind of claw your way up from the, from the bottom. But a home village... That idolizes you and gives you great prices. That's awesome. That's so flavorful. Just one city that just like loves you. One village. And you could just constantly resupply from there. And kind of set out from that one village to quest. I love it. So here's another one. The Cultists. For a different experience and some role playing flavor. You can also start the game as a wandering cult. That worships Davkul. So Davkul awaits. You lead a small flock devoted to the elder god. And it's time to spread the word. Find more followers, acquire riches, and please dove cool with sacrifices. So cultists, start with a group of three cultists with poor equipment. More cultists can be hired for free and be found in greater numbers around the world. So you can get free recruits. That's pretty good. That's a good upside. And sacrifices. Dove cool will occasionally demand sacrifices from you, but also bestow boons. Super interesting. It really depends on what the boons are and what the sacrifices are. So you'll start with three cultists, and more cultists will join you without any hiring fee. Cultists can be found more often in any settlement, and they may also flock to you in new events. That's cool. Your god will demand sacrifices, and you'll be expected to call the herd and give lives to Davkul and bloody rituals. All cultists will rejoice upon this gruesome occasion, and Davkul may bestow upon them permanent boons. Of course, anyone not a cultist in your company may have a different reaction to the proceedings. <laughs> Right, right. You have a monk in your party and you start sacrificing dudes, he's going to freak out. Having a special relation to your god will also make certain late game cultists events much more likely to trigger. There will be plenty more origins to choose from, of course, and next week we'll check them out. So let's go check them out now. We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait. I did all the waiting for you. So here we go. This is part two to the company origins. So last week we talked about what the company origins feature for the upcoming Wars of the North DLC is exactly... And looked at several of these origins. This week we continue with a closer look at two more origins. Alright, everything's subject to change. So this one is super exciting. And has to do a lot more with the DLC. And its particular flavor as, you know, Northmen. So the Northern Raiders. With an expansion focused on bringing variety and flavor to the northern parts of the map. It's only fitting that there'd be an origin that you start in the north as well. Playing as Northern Raiders lets you start with veteran raiders that are well equipped with some of the new Nordic and Rust inspired armor and helmets, which we'll show in an upcoming blog post of its own. Okay, so you came to these lands to raid and pillage for glory and riches. But with the local peasantry poor as mice, you may want to expand into the profitable field of mercenary work. That is, if your potential employers are willing to forgive your past transgressions. So warbands start with three experienced raiders that are well equipped. That's cool. Um, I'm sure it'll be like it is now where, you know, one guy has a two-handed axe, the other guy has a shield and spear, and, you know, you can see kind of in the picture, this dude's got a war brand. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to see exactly what these different starts mean in terms of equipment and skills. 
uh, outlaws start with bad relations to most human factions and pillagers. You have a higher chance to get any items from slain enemies as loot. These two right here, this is kind of what's making me want to um, take this start the most. And I'm going to get into that in just a second after we read this little paragraph here. And this one's also pretty awesome. So, however, you'll also start as outlaws, which mean that two out of the three noble houses are outright hostile, while the remaining one is distrustful. It makes for a challenging start where you rely more on venturing out on your own instead of taking on contracts. That's something I've been asking for since, like, the beginning of this game. And it's up to you how to proceed. Do you want to mend relations over time and become a proper mercenary company? Which isn't that hard. Uh, basically, you just have to wait until the first, like, crisis. Then do a bunch of contracts for everybody. And then after crises, unless they change it, um, everyone kind of resets to neutral. Unless they really loved you. But in terms of, like, being negative, um, once the noble wars are over, um, everyone kind of goes back to, to neutral towards you. And it's up to you how to proceed. Do you want, okay, let's see. Do you want to mend relations over time and become a proper mercenary company getting paid by the noble houses or do you continue with raiding and pillaging, uh, alienating the noble houses further? Fortunately, your men are quite proficient at pillaging and you'll have a higher chance to get any equipment dropped by your enemies in battle. So you have to rely less on being able to buy equipment in cities that will most likely just send their militia after you. So, one of my favorite things about the Noble War Crisis in the game is being able to fight at the cities. And I love the idea of, let's say I start in the north, the northern um, noble house loves me, or, or is just a little bit distrustful of me. I spend, you know, my early game questing for them, getting them to like me, slaying beasts up north, and, you know, feeling, it's like really thematic, right? I'm these Viking-esque raiders. And I'm building a home in the north. But I, the rest of the people in the world still hate me. And then I go down and I'm like, just raiding the hell out of them. Hopefully you get a map seed where the northern house is a strong house with good cities. And if that's the case, then, you know, just plunder. Just attack all the other cities. Fight militia. Fight mercenary companies. Uh, fight, you know, big town uh, battalions that come out with, with their own knights and stuff. And it kind of lends to a whole different style of playing, um, which I am super excited about. And then if you still want to just do quests, you know, go up north and do quests. And when the, when the other in-game crises start happening, um, you know, boom, you've got it. I actually kind of hope they'll add an in-game crisis where, like, Vikings invade from the north. That would be pretty sweet as well. So let's get into the last... And maybe one of the most different of the um, the starting choices. This one's called the Lone Wolf. And if you've been watching my series, you'll know that I, I like to use Lone Wolves quite a bit. So this one could be for me. For a very different experience of playing the game, and in some way the opposite to last week's Militia Origin, have your player character be present on the battle. So I'm excited about that. Um, I could have Captain Brett charging around so you've been traveling alone for a long time a hedge knight tall as a tree you never needed anybody is it true still so start with a single experienced hedge knight and great equipment below funds so you get some good armor like a hauberk or something like that maybe a full helm and a great sword like that sounds like a pretty great starting you know set of items it teeters off into the late game but you know, in the early game, fighting brigands and dire wolves and stuff like that, you'll be smashing people. Elite few can never have more than 12 men in your roster. So when someone dies, you, you're you going to feel it because you're going to have to train someone else up. But, I mean, I've played whole campaigns where I only kept 12 men in my roster. And I was very careful not to lose men. And when I did, you know, I replaced them with like a level 4, level 5, something high tier. Because I saved so much gold or crowns uh, from not having you know the full 20-man roster so avatar if your hedge knight dies the campaign ends so i mean if you just save scum and save scum is such an ugly way to say it but if you just save your game regularly i mean i don't know why you would ever just like let your campaign end but if you're trying to do some kind of hardcore um you know playthrough it does add flavor and to those people that love to play like that 
this is probably going to be your favorite option because you get to have this avatar, you know, of your guy and it'll make it more thematic in fights where like he starts going down and you've got to throw all of your other guys to save him, you know, do everything you can because in the end of the day, he's the one that matters the most. And that's going to make for some very interesting runs. So let me read this last paragraph and that's going to be it. You'll start with a single well-equipped and experienced hedge knight who is, in a way, your player character. He can't be fired and he'll never desert the company. But if he dies, your campaign ends and you lose the game. He'll be the strongest man in the company for quite a while, but having him in the fray is always a risk. So you'll have to think carefully on how you want to use him, exactly. And because this origin only ever allows you to have 12 men in your roster, there's no putting him in the back line. You go out there and fight side by side with the rest of your men, or you'll leave them at a disadvantage and have them call you a coward. Having to defend your player character adds a different layer of strategy to each battle. Despite your character starting out strong, it's a challenge suited best for experienced players. So there's more origins to choose from still, but we don't want to spoil everything, so you'll have to find out for yourself by playing the game. Join us again next week when we take a look at different features for the upcoming DLC. I'm excited, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed my overview of this, my opinions and my thoughts. Um, I may not make one next week. I might wait until there's enough you know, new information to put together another video, but a nice little 20 minute video. Uh, hopefully that was enjoyable to listen to and your guys are getting as hyped as I am for more and more Battle Brothers stuff. I hope this game never dies. <laughs> Honestly, I hope the map gets bigger. I hope they add more legendary locations, more events, more quests, more enemy types. I'll take it. Just keep adding new arms and armor, add more flavor to the game. You know, like a Southerner DLC with, like I said, like Arabian factions. Um, get even more like European stuff in there. You know, you could have the noble houses be very distinct and add even more late game crises. And this game, it, it's honestly a base platform for such huge expansion. And I think they see that now, which is why we're getting these back to back DLCs. And yeah, let's just hope it never ends. So show your support, buy the game if you haven't already and if you think you might be interested in it and you have the money. Don't buy anything you don't have the money for. But if you've got the money and you're interested, consider checking it out and supporting these guys who make an awesome game for us nerds. Um, and, you know, if you if you want the base game, buy the DLC too. Um, when this comes out, I might, I'll probably be streaming by then. And I might be able to do, I might buy an extra copy just as like a giveaway or something like that. Or maybe a few copies. I don't know how expensive they'll be. I imagine they'll probably be something like $15. Something like that. Maybe $10, $10, $15. And I could buy a couple and we could do a bit of a giveaway. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. It's everywhere. I have 21 cents in my wallet currently. <laughs> I'm not rolling in the money. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.